We welcome you back here on 93.7 KKRL, Mackey Motors at pregame show. Find new roads at Mackey Motors in Lake City. Getting ready for our boys contest here tonight. Kemper Knights under head coach Sean Minahan finished 9-14 and 14 last year, 3-8 and eight in the Hawkeye 10 at conference. For the Carroll Tigers under head coach Randy Beeson, the Tigers at 22-3 and three last year. Been a good portion of last season, ranked at number one in the state, ranked almost all season long in the top five. They were 17-1 and one in the Raccoon River Conference. Uh, the Tigers are winning last year's game by a final of 77-41. For Kemper coming in, um, this is a team that uh, I think has got a chance to take some steps forward this year. Um, they're going to be young. They are starting up four, three seniors and a junior, uh, but uh, they've got some young talent. I know talking with Coach Minahan that uh, he's really excited about some of the young kids coming into the program and that they're not just athletes uh, that are playing basketball. These are kids that enjoy the game of basketball, have put some time in. One of those, uh, Dawson Gifford, he averaged six points a game last year. I think they're looking for big things out of him this season. Um, I think Isaac Evans, another one of those guys, a, a strong physical kid uh, down in the post. Uh, 7.6 rebounds per game last season. And then they're going to be able to come off of the bench with a guy that can score and can really shoot the three pretty well in Michael Potamon. But for the Carroll Tigers, this team's got a chance to be terrific again this season. They'll get Caden Cook back. He missed a part of last year uh, because of that uh, broken foot that he had. But they've got two great scores in uh, Caleb Booth. He recently announced that he's going to be heading up to Northwestern College up in Orange City uh, to continue his education and, of course, his basketball career. I've got an interview scheduled for him for noon on Thursday. So hopefully have that interview posted maybe by 1 o'clock or so coming up on Thursday, and you'll be able to hear what Caleb has to say uh, about signing to play at Northwestern. Nick Mackey, another uh, terrific uh, shooter. Both of those guys have the ability to get to the rim. They both shoot the free throws extremely well. Um, they've got a big guy now in the middle. Evan Hammer comes in uh, at 6'4 this year, just a sophomore. Um, I've heard some really good things about this young man, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how he goes out and performs here tonight. Um, not a lot of depth beyond that. Uh, they don't have a lot of guys that have experience. One of them, Andres Cruz, played over at Arweva his first two years. This is his first year in the Carroll program. So uh, a lot of guys at getting their first varsity experience going to be coming off of the bench for the Knights here tonight. We'll step away, take a break. Back in one minute with a look at our starting lineups. That's coming up next right here on KKRL. Mackey Motors has been serving your vehicle buying experience stress-free. Our sales team will help determine your vehicle needs with options and features that you desire. Our finance team will explain financing terms and options best for each customer. Our service team is always here for you. From our Oil Changes for Life program to our exclusive warranty forever. We work to keep your new way vehicle going long after the sale. Stop by and let our family help yours get into the next car, truck, or SUV. St. Anthony Regional Hospital, the regional leader in healthcare, dedicated to improving the health of the people they serve. At St. Anthony Regional Cancer Center, you'll find the convenience of cancer and oncology consultation and treatment in one convenient location. At St. Anthony Clinic, you'll find a team of doctors and nurses that care about you and your family's health. St. Anthony Clinic is devoted to comprehensive health care for people of all ages. For every stage of life, always look to the cross. Always St. Anthony. Trees Company! People want and deserve more comfort, efficiency, and reliability, both in their homes and places of work. Dries Company will be there to meet these challenges, whether we are designing a new system or servicing your existing equipment. We are a rapidly growing company that strives to meet and exceed all your expectations. No matter if you are looking to buy new appliances or need the help from one of our certified technicians, we are here for you. We pride ourselves in our installation and service. Dries Company, servicing the Carroll area since 1933. Can your roof handle extreme hail conditions? Ours can. Check it out. As you can see, our Brinks roof has stood up to the test with zero damage. As for our competitors, well, theirs did not. Is your roof worn out or needs repair? Know that not all roofers and shingles are created equal. If you need honest feedback whether your roof needs to be repaired or replaced, get a second opinion. And call the Roof Pros at Brinks Exteriors, 920 Roof Pro. Right, so check that out, uh, and we've got our audio 
along with the video. And he's doing a terrific job this first time kind of being pressed into action for us here tonight. So we appreciate his help. Thanks to Tiff back in the studio monitoring things as well. The opening dip going to be controlled by the Carol Zengers. It'll be Caleb Booth in the backcourt with it. It'll be picked up by Dawson Gifford at the backcourt line. Knight's going to go man-to-man -man here early on. Cook will work it over to Mackey left side. Penetrates in on Houseman. Running layups up in good. Mackey with the first bucket of the ball game, and the Carroll Tigers lead it early 2 to nothing. Houseman will bring it up. Tigers will go man-to-man -to, -man to open things up. They work it now into the hands of Evans. Back over to Houseman. Picked up there by Mackey. Through the hands of Evans. Out top into the hands of Overmull. Back over to Houseman. On the right side to Evans at the free throw line. Dump pass underneath over the head that time of Houseman who didn't anticipate the pass. And it'll go out of bounds. It'll be Tiger basketball after the night turnover. Carroll with the basketball. Booth will bring it up, pushes it down left side all the way for the layup. Nobody rotated over defensively that time to help out in the Knights trail it here four to nothing. Kemper likes to push everybody to the left, but if you're going to push a guy that can handle it like that to the left, somebody's got to be able to help defense. Nate Overmull with the miss on the three. Now rebound taken down by Mackey for the Tigers ahead now. Driving in down to the baseline. That time Hammer gets it off to Cook back up top. Mackey drives in over to the left side. Now working to Lingling. Now off to Booth on the left wing. Booth wing it down into Lingling. Lingling. Looking inside, picks it up, gets it off to Caden Cook. Cook will penetrate in. Dump pass underneath. Nice step to remove for Hammer. Shot up no good. Rebound tipped into the hands of Gifford for the Kemper Knights. Two to four nothing. Carroll with the lead. Six and a half left here in the first quarter. Gifford now over to Overmull. Overmull with it. Back off into the hands of Gifford. Picked up there by Booth over to the left side. Penetrating in is Vanami. Vanami cut off on the baseline. Gets in there neat to Evans. Didn't realize he was wide open. Shot up no good. Got his own rebound. Goes back up. And he'll lay it up and in. So Isaac Evans with his first bucket here tonight. And the Knights have cut the Tiger lead here to 4-2. to two. Booth drives in. Cut off. Shot no good. A rebound to Gifford. A head to Houseman. Layup up no good. And the rebound to Lingling on the other end. And we're going to get a foul. Going to go on the Kemper Knights. Uh, foul going to go on Nate Overmull. That is his first. Knights had a chance to tie things up there. Caden Cook will inbound it. 5.58 left here in the first quarter. Booth brings it up. Penetrates in. Kick pass over to Mackey left side. Mackey now off into the hands of Booth on the wing. Up top to Cook. Open for three. Shot is up good. Caden Cook, the six-foot senior, drains the three. And Carroll leads it here 7-2. to two. Houseman skips it over Mole left side. His three is up good. Back-to-back -back threes. One for Carroll, one for Kemper. at 7-5. Tigers with the lead. Booth out top coming off a screen by Cook. Dribbles over to the right side. Now penetrates in up top to Mackey. Fires up the three. Up no good. A rebound pulled down that time by Isaac Evans for Kemper. Off to Overmull. Overmull gets it up across half court. Works it off now to Gifford. Gifford off the screen by Evans. Up top, ball knocked away by Booth. Gathers it back in, finds Vanami left side. Ball knocked away by Cook. And we're going to get a reach-in foul. Going to go on the Carroll Tigers, and that one's probably going to go on Caden Cook. Uh, that'll be the call. The senior picks up his first. That'll be the first on the Tigers. Subs coming in for Carroll. Gus Collison will check in. Also checking in is Tanner Gatto. Langeling and Hammer will check out. Houseman lobs it up to Vanami, down to Evans on the block. Evan goes up over Gatto and lays it up and in. Knights needs to use him. We're tied at 7-7. That is our first to tie here in the game. Quickly down the floor, Booth drives in, layup up, no good. Houseman with a rebound, but Collison comes up with a steal on the pass. Collison ball stolen away. He was trying to find Booth. Coming up with it is Gifford. Layup no good on the other end. The ball tipped out into the hands of Houseman. Back out to Houseman. Left side three. Partially blocked. Evans comes down with a rebound. His third goes back up. Count the basket. He'll draw the foul. And he's going to head to the free throw line. The end of one for Isaac Evans. We'll put the Kemper Knights on top here by a score of 9-7. Foul that time. They go on Gatto. That is going to be number one on him. So Evans at the line, a 59% free throw shooter a year ago. He's going to give them a really good presence inside this year. Strong kid. 
Free throw on the way. It is up no good. Battle for the rebound. Going to be taken down up by the Tigers. Got him. Booth will bring it up. Now over to Lingling. Over to the left side. Mackey again uses that quickness to get to the baseline. And the layup's up and good for Nick Mackey. He's got four here early. And we are tied at 9-9. Our second tie. 4-10 left here. First quarter. Ball stripped away. Coming out of there with it is Booth. Booth ahead to Mackey. And the layup's up and good for Nick Mackey. Carroll back on the top here, 11 to nine. Kemper with the basketball, Hensel with it. Works it off now to Evans. They work it over on the left side to Potabom. Nearly stolen away as he looks for Kaspa Bauer up top. Kaspa Bauer over to the right side. Three point shot from Hensel up in good. So Patrick Hensel off of the bench, picks up the bucket. Kemper leads it here again by a score of 12 to 11. Collison drives in, a tough shot in traffic, and a whistle and a foul going to go against Kemper. And that one looks like it'll go on Isaac Evans. No, they're going to call it on Potabom, number one on Michael Potabom, team foul number two on the night. Booth will check out. Bryce Burlau will check in. Burlau checks in now for Booth. Lob pass comes in to Lingling, or excuse me, off it to Hammer. Now to Gatto, back over to the right side. Up top to Gatto, crossover dribble, gets the left side, runner shot blocked and a whistle and a foul. Going to go on Isaac Evans. So that'll be number one on the Kemper big man. Couple of free throws coming up here for the 6'4 junior and Tanner Gatto. Gatto, first varsity free throws in his career. Free throw on the way, it is up off of the back of the rim, no good. Tigers got out quickly in this one. Let it by a score of 7-2. But Kemper has come back, taking a 12-11 lead. Free throw on the way. Up good this time for Gatto. And we are tied at 12-12. Third tie here in the ballgame. Knights with it. Get it down on the pot of on the left corner. He'll bring it up on the wing to Evans at the free throw line. Brings it down the right side. Quick ball movement, works it back to Kaspa Bar over to the left side, Potabom, three on the way up, no good. And we're gonna get a push off foul on Evan Adams on the rebound, the 6'3 sophomore, another one of those big, strong kids for Kemper inside this year. Booth will check back in, Zach Dirks checking in, Mackey and Collison will check out for the Tigers. Gatto will inbound it to Booth. 12-12 our score. Three minutes left here in the first quarter. Jeff Blankman with you tonight. 93-7 KKR. Coming to you live from the Gatorade Broadcast Booth. Distributed by Pepsi Beverages. Three-point shot from the left corner. Up and no good that time by Burlaw. Rebound taken down by Dirks. They'll work it over again to Burlaw. Penetrating in now Booth over to Gatto. 17-footer right side rattles in and good. That one was in and out and then in again. A bucket for Gatto, his first. The Tigers with the lead back up 14 to 12. Knights work it down to Evans. Baseline jumper off the glass, no good. Adams with the rebound, put back, no good. And the rebound taken down that time up by the Tigers. Hammer. Near steal. Coming up with it though for the Tigers is Gatto ahead. Dirks has it blocked. The rebound comes down to Adams. Now the ball knocked away, but Kemper will come up with it. 14-12, Carroll with the lead. Knights work the ball now into the hands as we're going to get a whistle and a foul. Going to go on Dirks. That was Patrick Hensel with it. Dirks going to pick up his first team foul number two on the Tigers. Are we getting a timeout here on the floor? Yep, we've got it. Hold on, no, I think we're just getting a bunch of substitutions coming in. We'll try to run you through all of the new players once they all get out onto the floor. Dirks, Booth, Lingling, Cook, and Gatto on the floor for Carroll. Right now for Kemper. Michael Kaspabauer out there along with Overmull. Also looks like Houseman, Vanami, and Gifford back onto the floor. They'll work it to Houseman left side. Tigers up here 14 to 12. Back to our cut by Houseman. Tough shot in traffic. Overmull picks up the assist. Houseman able to squeeze that one over the rim up and in. And we are tied at 14-14. That's our fourth tie here in the game. We're going to get a whistle and a foul on the other end as Booth goes strong to the basket. 
And that foul. Going to go on Michael Kaspabauer, his first. So Caleb Booth at the line, an 84% free throw shooter a year ago. This young man can shoot him as well as anybody. Nick Mackey comes to the scores table for Carroll. Free throw on the way by Booth is up in good. Potabom will check in for Overmall. Mackey checks in now for Gatto. 15-14 Carroll, minute 42 left here in this first quarter of play. Second free throw from Booth it squeezes over the rim. Tigers three of four at the line. They lead it here by two at 16-14. Now Dirks comes up with a steal. He's got a layup on the other end. It's up no good. Booth, though, the offensive rebound and put back. Caleb did a nice job that time kind of following his teammate after the steal and able to get the offensive rebound and put back. Tigers up here 18-14. Houseman has it knocked away by Dirks, then goes out of bounds trying to wrestle the ball back. It'll be out of bounds off of uh, the Knights, and it will be Tiger basketball. Timeout on the floor going to be called by the Kemper Knights. 18-14, Carroll with the lead. We're going to step away. We'll take a 30-second break. We'll do that right now on 93.7 KKRL. Choosing the People want and deserve more comfort, efficiency, and reliability, both in their homes and places of work. Dries Company will be there to meet these challenges, whether we are designing a new system or servicing your existing equipment. We are a rapidly growing company that strives to meet and exceed all your expectations. No matter if you are looking to buy new appliances or need the help from one of our certified technicians, we are here for you. We pride ourselves in our installation and service. Dries Company, servicing the Carroll area since 1933. Welcome you back here on at 93.7 KKR. Coming to you live from the Gatorade broadcast booth. Carroll leading at Kemper right now, 18-14, as Booth brings it up the floor. Again, they leave that left side open. This time, Potomom jumps out there, and we're going to get a travel call on Booth. Nice weak side help that time by Potomom. Booth has taken advantage of that a couple of times. Kemper always tries to force everybody left away from their strong hand. And that time, they were able to get that weak side help. Potomom gets it off, bringing it up now is Kaspabar. Kaspamauer between the legs, looks for Vanami left side. Tigers take that away, back to our cut by Gifford. The layup is up, no good. Rebound taken down by Vanami out to Potomom. Three up, no good, and the rebound taken down by Dirk for Carroll. Quickly down to Mackey, he is going to be fouled on the play by Michael Potomom. He'll head to the free throw line. That foul on Potomom is his second. Free throw on the way is up and good for Nick Mackey. Mackey, a 60% free throw shooter a year ago. Tigers now match their largest lead here at 19-14. Second one up good as a well. And the Cairo Tigers that lead it here by a score of 20 to 14. Gifford with it, off to Vanami. Vanami lost that one, knocked away by Cook, but they're gonna say last touched by Cook. So the Knights will inbound it down on the baseline with Kaspaba. Tough pass. Dirks knocks it right in to head coach Randy Beeson's hands. 41 seconds left first quarter. 20 to 14. Carroll with the lead. Kaspaba looking to get it inbound. He gets it in now to Potabom. Potabom with it. Works it off to Gifford. Gifford on the right wing. Going to fire up the quick three. It's up off the rim. No good. Mackey comes down with a rebound. Mackey will bring it up the floor over to the right side booth. Catch, drives in the lane, pull-up jumper from six. Rattles in and out, no good. Caden Cook with the offensive rebound. Goes back up over the head for the shot, no good. Mackey with the offensive rebound, no good. Rebound again to Cook, powers this one up and lays it up and in. Caden Cook with a pair of offensive rebounds and the bucket. Puts the Tigers up 22-14, six seconds left. Kaspa Bauer out top with it, picks up the dribble in some trouble, two seconds. Pass over the head of Gifford and out of bounds, and Carroll will have it with 1.1 second left here in the quarter. We'll see what kind of shot they can get. Booth moves really quick, but Gifford going to try to defend it. Caden Cook will throw it in. We'll see if they try to get him moving it towards the basket. Don't. He'll catch, turns, and throws. It is in no good, but Carroll will lead it 22 to 14. We've got the second quarter. That is one minute away right here on 93.7 KKRL. 
Waste, we deliver environmental services together. Why together? Because together we're stronger and more effective. We're proud to partner with you to recycle plastics. Recyclable plastic will have the number one or two inside the recycle symbol. It's generally a food, beverage, soap, or cleaner container. Make sure they're empty, give them a quick rinse if possible, and put the cap back on. These plastics are not recyclable. They belong in the trash. Visit our website at carrollcountylandfill.com for details of how you can be part of the recycling team. Because together, everyone achieves more. Being a part of a team is not only fun, it can give our students a sense of identity and help them develop long-term relationships. This is Dr. Nate Luth, Next Generation Chiropractic. Student athletes, make sure you are taking care of your body before, during, and after the game. Proper warm-ups and cool-down are vital to staying on the field or court, and having regular chiropractic appointments can help reduce the risk of injury. Stay in the game by taking care of your body. Good luck to all area student-athletes this season. Let's stay healthy and have fun. Tigers right now on a top. As they come out playing well here tonight, leading at Kemper. By a score of 22 to 14, Knights will have the basketball to start the second quarter. They get it into the hands of Isaac Evans, now off to Hausman. Hausman with it inside to Evans. Evans jumper up and no good, but he'll draw a foul. Get himself to the free throw line, and that one is going to go on at Nick Mackey, his first team foul number four on the Tigers here in the half. Evans at the line, 0 for 1 tonight. 59% free throw shooter a year ago, and the first one off of the back of the rim, no good. Kemper led this one 12-11. Tigers tied it up at 12-12, and then took a 14-12 lead. Second free throw for Evans up is good. And that'll make it 22-15. Tigers closed out that first quarter pretty strong. Then. Going on a 10 to run as Caden Cook drives in. Runner no good. Hammer has the rebound. Lost it. And we're going to get a jump ball possession here. We'll favor the Tigers. Those El Mutual halftime report coming up at the halftime here. Booth lobs it in now to Dirks. Over to Mackey. Out high on the right side. Looking to drive on Houseman. Goes behind the back. Comes to the right elbow. Kick pass left side to Dirks. Up top to Booth. Booth over to the right side, near the right elbow, over to Dirks, open left side, top of the key, three up, no good. And Isaac Evans has the rebound up for Kemper, his fourth of the ball game. Off now to Gifford. Gifford with it. Gets it off to Vanami. Vanami down the left side of the lane, kicks it out to Hausman. Hausman to the free throw line, kick pass left corner, over them all open for three up, no good. And the rebound taken down by Booth. Long pass down to Dirks. Dirks with it on the left side. On the block, passes it out top. And Booth goes down hard that time as Gifford was in the air with him. They both had the hand on the ball, and Booth ends up coming down, and he's going to probably have to come out of the game. I think he's going to be all right. Nope, he's going to stay in. God, I was going to come into the game for Caden Cook. That maybe means they stopped the game because Booth was still on the ground that he would have to come out, but they let him stay in the game. And he does appear to be all right. Landed on his backside kind of heavy there and maybe took a knee to the back of the neck. Hammer over to Dirks. Dirks with it up top to Booth. Booth drives in back over to Dirks, right side up top now to Mackey. He'll fire up a three, it's up and good. Nick Mackey with his first three, second three of the night for the Tigers. They lead it here by 10, 25-15. But Nami with it on the right wing, picked up by Gatto, gets it off now to Evans. Evans with it out high on that right side, top of the key, dump pass inside, stole it away by Dirks. Saves it, though, into the hands of Evans, misses the layup, and the rebound taken down by Mackey. Mackey will bring it down, pass up top, stole it away by Gifford. Gifford will bring it down, layup's good on the other end. Nice anticipation that time by Dawson Gifford, his second steal. Got a chance to see his sister Brooklyn here earlier tonight. Caleb Booth brings it in. Backdoor cut from Mackey. Layup good. The assist to Booth, his fourth of the ballgame. Ten-point lead for the Tigers at 27-17. Knights get it inside to Evans. Shot up no good. He'll draw a foul and get himself to the free throw line. A foul on the Tigers going to be their fifth, and it is going to be number one on Caleb Booth. Evans at the line, one of three tonight. Free 
Free throw is up and no good for Isaac Evans. Going to be alive again here from the Gatorade broadcast booth distributed by Pepsi Beverages. Gatorade helping athletes fuel, recover, and perform. Got our motor in player of the game coming up following the ball game. Motor in of Kerry, your premier Toyota Chevy Buick dealership where everything from sales to service to parts in collision. Isaac Evans knocks down the second three. 27 to 18 now. Carroll with the lead and the basketball. Booth with it out high on the left side. Crosses over, gets to the left elbow, now to the free throw line, Hammer's jumper up in good. So Evan Hammer with his first basket. Tigers take their largest lead of the game at 29 to 18. Gifford fires up a three off the left side, no good. Offensive rebound to Overmo, put back no good. Gatto will clear it for the Carroll Tigers. Gatto brings it up and past the scores table, gets it off to Booth. 5.07 left here in the first half. Roselle Mutual halftime report coming up. Down to the left corner. Mackey open for three. Good. Mackey starting to feel it. He's got uh, 16 already here in the ballgame. Tigers pulling away up 32-18. Kipper held in last year for a while, too, and then Tigers just kind of had too much for him. Houseman cut through, feeds it off to Venami. He lost it. Tigers just all over the place defensively. They helped so well. Gifford drives in, and we're going to get a travel on Dawson Gifford. Gus Collison probably would have taken the charge there. Kaspa Bauer, Potabom, Hensel, and Adams will check in. Gifford will be the only guy staying on the floor for Kemper. Mackey, Collison, Gatto, Booth, and Hammer in right now for Carroll. Four and a half left here first half. 32-18, Tigers with the lead and the ball. Caleb Booth with it. Penetrates over to the left side. Now kicks it down to the corner to Mackey. Mackey drives in. Try to dump it inside. It's going to be batted away out near half court to Booth. Booth will pick it up. Sets him up in the offense. 1-3-1 one, one look this time up for Kemper. Collison down in the right corner with it. Throws it up top now to Booth. Booth over to the left side. Back to her cut by Mackey. Taken away. Now off to Gatto. Back over into the hands of Booth. Booth looking to drive. Pull up jumper from 16. In and out. No good. A rebound to Potabam up for Kemper. Audubon again had a great cross-country season. Now takes it strong to the rim. Shot up no good. Rebound tipped around into the hands of Mackey. Mackey with his fifth rebound for the Tigers. Takes a length of the floor ball. Knocked away. Collison with a tip up. No good. It's going to be taken down that time by Gifford. 32-18. Kaspa Bauer drives in. And we're going to get a push and a foul. Going to go on Carroll. He's trying to leave that one off for Adams. So it probably won't be shots here. And foul going to go on Caleb Booth. That is number two on him. Sixth team foul. Both teams with six fouls right now. Casper Bauer to inbound on the baseline. Lob pass up top to Gifford. Catches, pump, makes, gets around at Mackey into the lane. Runner up no good. And an offensive foul has taken the charge that time is Evan Hammer. So Gifford will pick up his first team foul number seven. But that's a player control foul, so no free throws. Caden Cook going to check into the ballgame, and he'll check in for Gatto. Appreciate everybody tuning in here tonight. Thanks again to Mason Voigt for running the video here tonight. You can find it by going to YouTube, searching 1380 KCM. It's powered by New Way Ford in Coonab. It's our video and our audio. It's a live broadcast of the game on the Internet. Boost three-point shot up, no good. Rebound tipped into the hands of Collison. Put back up in good. I'll give his dad, Pete, a little credit for that one. I gave his mom credit for all of his football talent. I'll give his dad some credit for his basketball skills, at least on that one anyway. Evan Adams with it. Out high near that left elbow. Now works it over to Kaspavar, picked up by Booth. Kaspavar between the legs, gets the left side, tries to kick one out. We're going to block call, going to go on the Tigers. That'll probably go on Collison as he ended up on the deck. That'll be the call. 5'10 senior picks up his first. 2.50 left here in the first half. Roselle Mutual halftime report coming up. Caspa Bauer at the line. The 5'10 sophomore has not attempted a varsity free throw. That one is up no good. Rebound tipped out to him. Drives in and tries to dump it underneath the Adams. It's knocked out of bounds that time by Hammer. Uh, 
Rachel inbounded again with Kasparbar. Kasparbar gets it into Gifford in the right corner, up top now to Hensel. Hensel with it. Over to Adams, just inside the top of the key, over to the right side to Kasparbar. Kasparbar defended out there by Booth. Two and a half left here at first half, 34-18 Carroll. Nice backdoor cut by Hensel. Layup's up, no good. He got around Mackie Hammer, comes up with a Tiger rebound, his third. Ahead now to Cook, over to Collison, open for three from the corner. It's up, no good. Rebound knocked out of bounds by Cook, and it will be at Kemper Basketball. Tigers will make a substitution. The 5'10 junior Bryce Burlaw will check in. Gatto also going to check in as Booth checks out. Hammer will check out as well. 2.18 left here in the half. And Vanami at the free throw line. 6'3 sophomore has not attempted a varsity free throw in his career. The first one's up and good. Thirty-four and nineteen, Carroll with the lead. Second free throw upcoming. Knights right now three of seven from the line here in the first half, and make it four of eight as Vanami knocks down both. Thirty-four to twenty. Merlaw brings it up, gets it across half court, nearly stolen by Kasparov. Kemper wanted a five-second call. Mackey with it now. Over on the left wing, picked up, and he's going to be bumped and fouled by Kasparov. The 5'10 sophomore will pick up his second. Each team now with 18 fouls. And Nick Mackey going to head to the free throw line. Where he is 2 of 2 tonight. A career 60% free throw shooter at least last season. Free throw by Mackey is up and good. Tigers right now six of seven from the line here in the game. 35-20, Carroll with the lead. Second free throw on the way. Rattles home up for Nick Mackey. I'll make it 36-20. Hensel off to Houseman. Over to Adams as it bounces away. Now off up top. Vanami long three just inside the 10-foot line on the free throw line. It's up no good. Caden Cook will clear his third rebound. He's going to drive down. Stolen away by Vanami. Vanami out in front of the pack, goes up for the dunk, misses it, and the rebound taken down by Gifford. Now Adams loses the dribble off his foot and out of bounds. So the turnover ends up with no points for Kemper, and it gives it back over to the Carroll Jaggers. Vanami was open that time, just lost the ball as he got up by the rim, and it hit off of the rim on that dunk attempt. Collison will check out. Langling back onto the floor for the Jaggers. Burlaw will bring it up, defend it out there by Houseman. I'll work it over to Mackey, left side, penetrates in, left it for Gatto, lost it, picks it up in the lane and knocks down the little four-footer. Way to stay with it that time for Tanner, Tanner Gatto. And the Tigers lead it here at 38 to 20. Inside of Anami, shot blocked by Gatto. Rebound tipped out, coming out of there with it is Mackey. He's on the break, leaves it off. Burlaw's free, their layup is up no good and we're gonna get a jump ball between Mackey and Gifford. Possession error will favor Kemper. Bryce was going full speed when he tried to attempt that layup here a moment ago and was a little bit out of control. Caught it and had to instantly go up. Houseman will bring it up. Work it now over to Vanami, over to the right and left side to Houseman. Houseman penetrates in, now off into the hands of Isaac Evans. Evans spins, tries to kick it back out to Houseman and travels with the basketball. So the turnover will give it over to the Tigers with 49.3 seconds left here. In this first half of play, Roselle Mutual halftime report coming up. Again, we're planning on talking with Katie Cook and one of the Carroll girls along with Three-point shot up, no good at that time for Nick Mackey. Rebound taken down by Evans, along with Tyler trying in one of the Kemper girls. Gifford drives down. Top reverse layup up, no good. Lingling will come down with a rebound. And we're going to get 
A timeout here as Hammer lost his shoe. So Kayla Booth will check in for him. 26.2 seconds remaining here in this first half of play. Burlaw will check out. Hammer will end on. Kayla Booth going to run it up. So Booth up across F court. Tigers will hold for the final shot here of the half. Tigers up right now 38 to 20. Booth fakes like he's going to go that time on Houseman. Hammer comes out, sets the cream. Booth goes away from him. Step back three up, no good. Evans comes down with a rebound for Kemper off to Gifford. Half court shot at the buzzer. Short just grazes the rim. And we are through a one half of play. It is the Carroll Tigers up here 38 to 20 at the halftime. The Tigers hold the Knights to six points in that second quarter. Roselle Mutual halftime report next right here, 93.7 KKRL. Working as a team to achieve success is the only way towards victory. Hi, this is Kelly Danner. Having teammates that have your back isn't just for game day. It's important when it comes to your insurance coverage too. Roselle Mutual and Grinnell Mutual are here to provide you with a winning lineup of quality insurance no matter what your needs are. Give us a call today at 792-4525 for your commercial, farm, home, and auto insurance needs. Roselle Mutual proudly insuring the area since 1876. This is Iowa, and Avala Bank has called Iowa home since 1870. With 17 locations across the state, we're proud to be part of your community. Right now, you can open an Avala Bank Simply Free checking account for you or your business and get a new debit card immediately. We'll even buy your old bank's unused checks. Stop by or visit us online to see how we're making better banking available for you. Avala Bank, member FDIC. The door to rewarding career opportunities is closer than you think. All you have to do is open it. DMAX Carroll Campus is your gateway to in-demand rewarding careers. You can even earn a four-year degree on campus thanks to a partnership with UNI and Buena Vista University. It's all waiting for you at the DMAC Carroll Campus. So open the door to a better life at DMAC in Carroll today. DMAC, life's calling. One of the best kept secrets in Carroll is JP Flooring. I was looking to replace the floor in a couple rooms at home. It can be super overwhelming with all of the options available. I popped by JP Flooring and was super surprised and impressed with the showroom and selection. I had no idea how extensive their product lines were. They have a designer on staff that helped me narrow down what I was looking for. When you change your floors, it changes the whole character of a room. I used their product visualizer and could literally see in advance what the styles would look like in my room. I totally recommend JP Flooring in Carroll. Family owned and operated since 1948, Quant Auto Salvage is the area's best full service scrap facility. Whether you are looking to sell scrap iron, vehicles, or batteries, or you need to locate that difficult to find part for your vehicle, they have what you need. And if it isn't in stock, they can locate it with their nationwide parts database, or you can pull it yourself at their You Pull It. Quant Auto Salvage. They sell the best and recycle the rest on Kitty Hawk Avenue in Carroll all area teams. Roseau Mutual Insurance, a proud sponsor of tonight's halftime show. Roseau Mutual believes in the value of youth activities to help develop adults that will be our future community leaders. They are your hometown teammates for commercial, farm, home, and auto insurance needs. Give them a call, 712-792-4525. We're going to jump into our Mackey Motors postgame show right now for the girls game here. As Joining us is Catherine Mayhall with the uh, Kemper Knights. And Catherine, a tough one here tonight, but what do you and the girls take away from this game with the Carroll Tigers here this evening? Um, well, I think we definitely need to slow down the ball because they tried to speed us up a lot. So we need to just slow down and take care of the ball even when we're under pressure would be the biggest thing, I think. 
How did you feel like you handled the pressure tonight? Um, I felt like I personally did pretty well after the Bondurant game. I was really like, I feel like I sped up a lot for them. So this game, I really tried to stay patient and um, just take care of the ball and move it slower because when we slow them down, they they don't like that. So, um, but I think as a team, we we did okay. We need to work on it a little bit more, but we have a really young team. You know the defenses are going to focus on you a little bit. So how do you how do you get everybody else involved a little bit? Um, like moving away from the ball while I, after I give the ball to someone, try and screen away and like create motion for myself or you know create motion for them and get looks for them because sometimes they're more on me, so it leaves them more open and able to pass it to them. Well, I tell you what, I appreciate you coming up in your boots <laughs> here tonight. I got to scroll down to the boots, but appreciate you coming up here tonight. Best of luck. We'll see you on Saturday. Thank you. You bet, Catherine Mayhall joining us. We'll go ahead and get in. Catherine, if you can hang out for a little bit, if you can hang out here for a little while, we'll get head coach Tyler trying on the headphones here tonight. And coach, how did you feel like things went for you and the girls tonight in this game early? Things I thought started to slip away there in that second quarter. Well, the biggest thing is we've seen improvement from Bondurant until uh, tonight. We, uh, you got to give Coach Cook a lot of credit because those girls were ready to go. Um, not that we weren't, but we're just, you know, we're, we're a young team. We got one senior, one junior, and a bunch of underclassmen playing. And when you play a good program like Carroll, you know, you, you're going to have some growing pains. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a process that we're working on and just little fundamental things that we got to work on, uh, take care of the basketball better and knock down some shots when given the opportunity. I, I thought did a better job of getting to the free throw line in the second half. What adjustments did you make? Uh, nothing. We, we attacked pretty good the first half. We just weren't getting the calls. And that's, you know, that's part of the game. You just got to play through it and, and keep attacking and see if you can't get to the free throw line. That has been a point of emphasis for us. We got to the line uh, 15 times against Brown Durant. And then, you know, we got to the line. We can shoot free throws. We just got to be able to get to the line and, and continue to be aggressive. A lot of young players getting some action for you tonight. What did you see from your younger players and inexperienced players coming in? Well, probably what you'd expect. We, we saw some good things, and then we saw, you know, a little immaturity take care, taking care of the basketball and, and trying to pass through people instead of ball faking and, and doing some fundamental things. But, you know, Carson Overmole continues to get better, and, and uh, Lauren Bell got out there, and her athletic ability is going to be something that we need. And Casey... Uh, Casey gave us some good minutes, and, and Aubrey's still trying to figure it out. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's just going to take a little time. Well, Coach, uh, appreciate you coming up. We'll see you Saturday against Dennis and Schleswig. Thanks for coming up here today. All right. Thanks, Jeff. You bet. Tyler Tryon, we're going to get Maddie Tuning over here on the headphones here, and we'll get uh, Maddie to join us next. Catherine, don't go anywhere. Stay up here if you would. We're going to get Maddie Tuning now on the headphones. And Maddie, congratulations. Awfully good game for you, especially in that second half. Thank you. Uh, you ended up, you're, you're down in the post this year. You're not the tallest girl in the world. Yeah. So how do you try to battle that against taller players like you had to face tonight? Because I thought you did a nice job. You know, I think it really helped um, in the beginning having Josie down there telling me what to do when we were running our zone offenses. So I think that really helped just having my teammates help me out. What worked for you down in the post tonight? Because you were able to find yourself uh, probably more of that mid-range game than anything, I think, tonight. I think, honestly, posting up a little bit, even though I'm not as big, I think it really helped posting up, getting open, and turning or even kicking the ball out. Talk about the defensive effort tonight. You had to battle Franny Glenn. You had to battle Lauren Bell. You had to battle some size down there. How do you feel like you handled that? And how do you feel you think your team did as a whole tonight defensively? Honestly, I think we did pretty good in the beginning it was a little rough where we didn't have as much backside help but I think we did adjust it after half and did good covering each other and we kind of switched it up and went 21 from coach and I think coach even told me to front the Franny when I'm on those big girls if I need to sitting at 2-0 and right now where's this team at here early in the season what do you think's made you guys 2-0 and you know I think we're doing really good with our team chemistry we're really close and just have fun playing the game what do you got to do to get a win against Gilbert coming up on, on Friday night? I think our defense has to be strong and our shots have to be falling. Tell you what, a great job out here tonight. Thank Appreciate you. you joining us and congratulations on the victory here tonight. Thank you. You bet. Don't go anywhere. Hang on with us here. We're going to get to head coach uh, Katie Cook uh, coming over here in just a second. And coach going to join us on the headphones. We'll get her. We're going to get her thoughts here real quick. 
And coach, congratulations, a good win for you tonight. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, the girls talked about wanting to speed this thing up. I, I think that was your game plan coming in. How did you feel like you did that tonight? Well, we, our speed is our, is, you know, if we can use our speed, it's to our advantage for sure. So we're always trying to do that. And I was talk, just talking to somebody about this. <laughs> sometimes it works really well for us and, and sometimes it comes back and bites us. But um, just as far as some of us are too fast for our feet at times. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, defensively, I thought we looked pretty good at the end of the second half and, and then the third quarter was pretty big for us. How did you feel like you execute offensively right now? I know you want to get into the lane, create things in the lane, and then if you have to, kick out. But how are they running the offense for you right now? Um, well, I would I we had five girls in double digits yep. tonight, uh, which is great. It's really even scoring. I think it makes us tough to guard. Uh, we've got some excellent passers. When we're when we're moving, we're tough to guard. Um, we've just. You know, I'm never going to be happy, Jeff. <laughs> There's always something we can be better at. Uh, no, I thought the girls did well tonight. And half-court offense is something that we will just continue to work on day in and day out. Free throws did a really good job getting to the free throw line early tonight. Uh, maybe not as many in the second half, but had to be happy the way that you guys were getting the ball inside. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we tried to take those high percentage shots and go inside before we go outside. And I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. I think we're better than that. Better than at that this year than we were last year. Um, yeah, and, but on the defensive end, I mean, you could say the same for Kemper. They got into the lane a lot, particularly in the first quarter, um, which, I mean, they gave our defense some fits in the first quarter. So to their credit, um, they played a great game. Well, Coach, I appreciate you joining us here tonight. Congratulations on the victory, and we'll have Nick Brinks up there at Gilbert on Friday night. Very good. Thank you. You bet. Head Coach Katie Cook with the uh, Carroll Tigers. We'll step away, take a break, and back with more of our Roselle Mutual Halftime Report. We're coming back in one minute right here on 93.7 KKRL. As the Building Products Headquarters. We have everything you need for your smaller home improvements to the building of your home or commercial building. We pride ourselves on giving you top-notch service, quality products with competitive prices. So whether you're a do-it-yourselfer, a contractor, or you just need a little help on a project, Midwest Wholesale is a one-stop resource for all your building needs. Midwest Wholesale, how you want it, when you want it, where you want it, we deliver. Being a part of a team is not only fun, it can give our students a sense of identity and help them develop long-term relationships. This is Dr. Nate Luth, Next Generation Chiropractic. Student athletes, make sure you are taking care of your body before, during, and after the game. Proper warm-ups and cool-down are vital to staying on the field or court, and having regular chiropractic appointments can help reduce the risk of injury. Stay in the game by taking care of your body. Good luck to all area student athletes this season. Let's stay healthy and have fun. Roselle Mutual Insurance again is a proud sponsor of tonight's halftime show. Roselle Mutual believes in the value of youth activities to help develop adults that will be our future community leaders. They are your hometown teammates for commercial, farm, home, and auto insurance needs. Give them a call, 712-792-4525. Appreciate everybody tuning in here tonight on 93.7 KKRL. Halftime of the boys game here tonight. Carol on top right now by 18, 38 to 20. Let's take a quick look. At our unofficial numbers here in the first half for Kemper, Nate Overmall with three points, a rebound and an assist. Jared Ausman with two points, two rebounds and an assist. Dennis Vanami with two points to go with a rebound and a steal. Dawson Giffords got two points to go with four rebounds and two steals. Isaac Evans, eight points to go with six rebounds. Michael Kaspabauer has got a rebound and an assist. Patrick Hensel with three points. Michael Potabam again uh, with a rebound. And also uh, Evan Adams with two rebounds. The Knights, four of eight from the free throw line. For the uh, Carroll Tigers, Nick Mackey, huge first half. 19 or 18 points, six rebounds and an assist. Caleb Booth, six points, two rebounds, six assists and a steal. Ethan Langley uh, has got two rebounds. Caden Cook with five points to go with three rebounds. Evan Hammer, two points to go with three rebounds. Zach Dirks has got to a rebound and two steals. Tanner Gatto has got five points to go with two rebounds, and Gus Collison with two points to go with two rebounds and a steal here tonight for the Tigers. Uh, Carroll in that uh, first half ends up going seven of eight from the free throw line. 
Do want to remind you and give a quick shout out to New Way Ford in Coon Rapids, sponsoring sports on the go with me and giving me a vehicle to drive to all of the different sporting events I've been covering over the last year plus. The New Way Ford feature vehicle of the night is a 2018 Ford Expedition SUV. It's got about 95,000 miles on it. It's a four-wheel drive. You can check out more details by going to the Carroll Broadcasting website at 1380kcim.com or you can call New Way Ford at 800-861-7268. For more details as well. Sports on the go with me, Jeff Blankman, powered by New Way Ford in Coon Rapids, home of warranty forever, and at your home for free oil changes for life. Kill Tigers will have the basketball as we start the second quarter here tonight. They lead it at 38 to 220. Third quarter, thank you. Langling with it, gets it down to Cook in the left corner. Cook penetrating in, gets it inside now. Hammer goes up in front of the rim, shot up no good. Rebound tipped around and into the hands of Isaac Evans. Evans gets it over now. Overmull over to the right side of the house, but Overmull cuts down, gets the bounce pass, brings it down on the baseline, brings it back up on the wing. Cut off there. Now looks for the cutter, ball tipped around. Caleb Booth will come up with a loose basketball. Fifth steal for the Tigers, ahead to Hammer, left elbow. Kick pass over the right side, top of the key. Mackey's three up short, and the rebound tracked down by Caden Cook. Over now to Lingling. Lingling gets it to Hammer, left elbow. Hammer double teamed, back out to Lingling on the wing. Lingling tries to bring it up top, picked up there by Houseman, works it now off to Booth. Caleb over to the left side to Lingling. Seven minutes left here, third quarter. 38-20 in favor of the Tigers. Cook down to Mackey, right corner. Got the baseline, drives in, reverse layup block. It'll be out of bounds, and it will stay with the Tigers. Don't forget our MC Country Cafe Coaches Show coming up again Saturday morning, 8 to 9 o'clock. I'll talk with all four of our coaches here, as well as Eric Noggle, the uh, Carroll wrestling coach, and Shane Vaughn, the Kemper wrestling coach, Deb Danner. Of course, the boys swim coach there in action tonight as well. Also set to join us. Booth with it up top. Comes off a screen near the left elbow. Picks it up. Finds Mackey on the wing. Houseman nearly steals it from Mackey who finds Cook. That was a kid. Kind of a tough pass, a dangerous pass. Mackey up top now underneath the Lingling. Knocked away by Vanami. Lingling gathers it back in and lays it up and in. His first bucket tonight, the 6-2 senior. Tigers with their largest lead up here, 40 to 20. Overmull with it, over and out of Anami. Anami penetrates left side, gets it off into the hands of Gifford. Back over to Houseman to Evans on the right elbow. Evans trying to back in on Mackey. Shut him off the glass, no good. Battles for his own rebound and comes up with his eighth of the ball game. Out to Houseman and the three is up and good. Jared Houseman with his first three, third of the night for the Knights. And they trail it here by a score of 40 to 23. Booth with it, out high left side near the Tiger emblem. Skip pass down to Mackey, right corner. Pump fake got around Vanami, a runner on the way, left it short. And Vanami will come up with the Kemper rebound. They'll push it ahead. Tiger's doing a really good job getting back defensively. Mackey comes up with the steal. His at first, ahead to Booth, and he'll lay it up and in. Caleb Booth's third bucket tonight. Tigers lead it here, 42-23. Evans on the right elbow. Tries down that right side, now against Hammer, leaves it short off the glass, and Hammer will come up with a rebound, his fourth. Off now to Mackey, Tigers will push it over to Booth, three on the way up. No good, and the rebound taken down by Vanami. Vanami will push it ahead, kicks it off to Isaac Evans, back off now to Vanami. Maybe got away of a drag of that pivot foot on that one. Down to Gifford, left to the corner, three in and out, no good. Rebound tipped around and gathered in by Evan Hammer. Off now to Booth, he'll bring it up across half court. Hesitation move on that crossover, now kicks it down to Mackey, wide open for three, up good! Booth with his seventh assist, Mackey shooting a well, he's got three threes. Carroll up here at 45-23, their largest lead of the ball game. Houseman picks up the dribble, gets it over to Overmull. Down to the left side, Vanami's three on the way up, no good. And the weak side a rebound taken down that time by Ethan Langling, his third. Caden Cook will bring it up, gets it across half court, works it off now into the hands of Booth. Down to the left side to Ling Ling. Ling Ling will drive in, ball knocked away, gathers it back in, tries to feed it inside, found a hammer, but now I'm able to tip it away from behind. It'll stay with the Daggers. Line changes for both teams. We'll run you through lineups as soon as everybody gets out onto the floor. Gifford, Adams, Evans, Hensel, and Kasperbauer. 
And actually right now, Kemper's got six, so Evans is gonna check out. For the Tigers, it's Booth, Gatto, Mackey, Collison, and Dirks. Booth looking to get it in, bounds on the baseline, throws it into the backcourt to Collison. Collison over to the left side, top of the key to Mackey. Mackey has it stolen away from behind by Gifford. Gifford will drive it down, and the layup's up in good. Booth wisely didn't foul him and didn't really give too much chase on that one. Tigers lead is 20 at 45 to 25, under four left here in the third quarter. Nice screen and roll that time. Gatto going to be tripped up, stepped on the foot of Evan Adams. Adams will pick up the foul. That's going to be number two on him. Team foul, number one on the Knights here in the half. And Tanner Gatto will be back at the free throw line. One of two for him there tonight. Free throw on the way, up off the back of the rim and drops down through. Gatto's lead is at 21. Largest lead's been 22. Chance to tie it here. Gatto's free throw on the way up, good. Tigers always shoot good free throws. They lead it here 47 to 25. And now a steal by Gus Collis and the layup's up in good for the senior. Timeout going to be called by Kemper. Collison with his fourth point here tonight. Tigers have their largest lead at 49 to 25. We'll step away, take a break. We'll be back in 30 seconds with more basketball right here on 93.7 KKRL. At Farm Bureau, Ford and Coon Rapids, and Newey Auto and Jefferson, we make your vehicle buying experience stress-free. Our sales team will help determine your vehicle needs with options and features that you desire. Our finance team will explain financing terms and options best for each customer. Our service team is always here for you, from our Oil Changes for Life program to our exclusive warranty forever. We work to keep your new way vehicle going long after the sale. Stop by and let our family help yours get into the next car, truck, or SUV. Back here on the Gatorade broadcast booth, distributed by Pepsi Beverages. Gatorade helping athletes at fuel, recover, and perform. Jeff Lankman with you here today. Got Tiffany back in our studio. Carol and Kemper varsity doubleheader. The Carol girls winning earlier tonight by a final of 73 to 43. Uh, the Tigers leading the night here, 38 to excuse me, 49 to 25. It's 38 to 20 at the halftime. We're mid part of the third quarter. This game was tight early, four ties, four lead changes in that first quarter. The last tie was at 14-14. Tigers took a 15-14 lead and haven't really looked back since then. Went on an 8-0 run to end the first quarter. Casper Bauer with a long three off the left side. He knocks that one down, and it's 49 now, 228. Lead down to 21. Booth gets it over near the left elbow, up top to Dirks. Bounce pass left side to Booth. Booth again, back up top to Dirks. Nice catch that time by Dirks. Got it with the right elbow down to Collison. Right corner three up and no good. And the rebound going to be taken down that time up by the Knights. They work it off to Hensel. Hensel over into the hands of Kaspabauer on the left wing. Kaspabauer nearly has it stolen by Dirks. Feeds it into Evans. Evan Adams, excuse me. Off to Hensel up top, crossover dribble. Works it over on the right side to Kaspabar, looking to drive on Dirks. Floater off the baseline up, no good. And the rebound taken down that time up by Dirks. And almost came down on Booth, who was trying to take the charge and was laying on the ground. Collison right corner over to Booth, left side Mackey, three on the way, no good. Got to his own rebound, lost it, and it's going to be picked up by Adams. Ahead, and Gifford will lay it up and in. Austin Gifford with his third bucket here tonight. It's now a 19-point game at 49 to 30. Nearly stolen away that time by Potama. Collison with it in the right corner. Pass up top, stolen away by Gifford. His fourth steal of the game. Layup on the other end, up in good. And we're going to get a timeout called by the Carroll Tigers. Knights on a run here, down 49 to 32. We'll step away, take a break. Mack in 30 seconds right here on at 93.7 KKRL. 
Hi! Outdoor Power is your one-stop service and equipment shop for all things outdoor. We sell the best power sports products in the business from Polaris, Can-Am, Sea-Doo, and Ski-Doo, trailers to tackle any job from H&H, Triton, and Wilson, and we continue to lead the way in lawn and garden equipment with great products from Exmark, Dixie Chopper, Husqvarna, Cub Cadet, Steel, and Echo. Add factory trained technicians in two locations, and it's easy to see why Olson's Outdoor Power is the leader in all things outdoor. Olson's Outdoor Power, your one-stop service and equipment shop with locations in Atlantic and Carroll. Good showing so far for the Carroll Tigers, but the Kemper Knights on a run here. And we're down 49 to 25. A 7 0 run has cut it to 49 to 32. We're coming to you live here from the Gatorade broadcast booth, distributed by Pepsi Beverages. Gatorade helping athletes fuel, recover, and perform. Tigers will have the basketball as head coach Randy Beeson having to call. One of his rare timeouts here tonight. This team's been in control since about late part of the first quarter. Had to settle them down here just a little bit. Booth up across half court, works it off now to Cook. Caden looking for some help, picks up the dribble over to Booth. The Booth drives in, back off to Cook. Three point shot on the way up and good. I've got Caden Booth unofficially eight assists here tonight. Caden Cook with his second three. That lead is quickly back to 20 as Kaspabauer drives in and gets to the rim. He's showing some skills here tonight. He's only got five points, but has played pretty well. It's 52-34. Mackey in the right corner. Gets it up top to Booth. And at 16 left, third quarter. Booth with it. Penetrates in. Fakes the pass. Drives in. Shot blocked by Adams. Going to whistle and a foul. Going to go on Evan Adams. Don't forget, Tyler Bruner and I will gather in all of the basketball results for all 20 of our area programs. Uh, girls and boys will write up recap stories with full stats on all of those games. We'll also get the Carroll Boys swim team stats typed up for you tonight. And a recap story of that. And South Central Calhoun Wrestling is there at a quad up at MOC Floyd Valley. All of that will go on the Brinks Exterior Sports Report tonight. Booth makes one of two free throws. Tigers will lead it here 53 to 34. Michael Kasparbauer with it, penetrates over, gets it down to the corner to Gifford. Three is up in good for the senior. This thing is not over yet. It's a 16 point game, but the Knights have gotten something going offensively here as of late. Caden Cook with it, drives in, picks up the dribble. Works it over on the right side. Get it off to Dirks, back to Cook. Cook drives in, knocked away from behind. It's loose, but he fights to get it back. And then what are we going to get? A travel call. Going to go on Caden Cook. He was down on a knee and must have stood up. Isaac Evans in for Evan Adams. 37.8 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Going to be debuting a brand new sports website for Carol Broadcasting here in the near future, so look out for that. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of different things that we haven't been able to do with the old website, so it'll be a sports-only website for Carroll Broadcasting. Casper Bauer again fights his way in, kisses one off the glass. And it's 53-39. Booth with it, eight seconds left. Casper Bauer defends, and now a lazy pass stolen away by Potomom. Layup's good on the other end. Kemper has charged back here in the third quarter. They're down at 12, 53 to 41. We'll step away, we'll take a break. We'll come back with that fourth quarter. That is coming up in one minute right here on 93.7 KKRL. From puddings to framing to finish, for farm, home, or commercial, for more than 90 years, Wallach Lumber Company has been proud to help our communities grow. With four convenient locations and one of the largest building material inventories in the area, we are sure to be able to fill all your building needs. From project design and estimating to friendly advice, we can't wait to be part of the process for you. Wall Lake Lumber, with locations in Wall Lake, Lakeview, Odebolt, and Carroll. We're not your grandpa's lumber yard.
Olson's Outdoor Power is your one-stop service and equipment shop for all things outdoor. We sell the best power sports products in the business from Polaris, Can-Am, Sea-Doo, and Ski-Doo, trailers to tackle any job from H&H, Triton, and Wilson, and we continue to lead the way in lawn and garden equipment with great products from Exmark, Dixie Chopper, Husqvarna, Cub Cadet, Steel, and Echo. Add factory trained technicians in two locations, and it's easy to see why Olson's Outdoor Power is the leader in all things outdoor. Olson's Outdoor Power, your one-stop service and equipment shop with locations in Atlantic and Carroll. Kemper will have the basketball as we get set to start the fourth quarter. Appreciate everybody tuning in here tonight. More basketball coverage coming up for you Friday and Saturday. We'll have a triple header of games again, uh, three double headers on Friday night, and then we'll have the Kemper Denison Slushwood game Saturday afternoon. That part of that triple header Friday night will be Carroll at Gilbert. Nick Brinks will have that broadcast. I'll be up at South Central Calhoun at ESAC as Gifford penetrates in out to Potabom. Three on the way up and good. Michael Potabom hits the three. Gifford with the assist. And all of a sudden, the Kemper Knights are within nine at 53-44. Langling with it on the right side, brings it up, gets it up top near the half-court line to Cook over to Booth. Booth penetrates in, dump pass underneath the Langling. Langling trying to battle against a Potabom, goes up for the shot, and Potabom going to pick up the foul. That'll be number three on the senior. Ethan Langling will head to the free throw line to shoot a pair. Last year was a 62% free throw shooter. Has not attempted a free throw yet here tonight. Randy Beeson right now talking with one of the officials. The free throw for Langling is up and good. Lead is back to 10. Booth, Mackey, Cook, Langling, and a hammer on the floor for the Tigers. Langling knocks down both free throws. Gifford will bring it up for the night. 55, 44, Carroll with the lead. Adami on the left side with it. Comes off the screen on the elbow by Evans. Goes over to the right elbow. Now down underneath to Gifford who feeds it underneath to Evans. Shot up under the rim is up and good. So Isaac Evans with another bucket. He's got 10 now on the night. First bucket for him here in the second half. And the Knights are down nine at 55-46. Cook with it over to Booth. Booth, left side, top of the key, kick pass right side. Mackey drives in, a tough shot up, no good. An offensive foul on the charge as Adams takes the charge. Mackey with his second foul here, third against the Tigers here in the half. Not a lot of fouls called in the second half. Three on Carroll, one on Kepper. So Neither team close to the one and one yet. That was actually Isaac Evans that uh, drew that charge. Houseman with it. Bounce pass up top. Gifford gonna fire up a three and banks it home. But things are starting to fall here for the Kemper Knights. They're down six. At 55 to 49. We've got a timeout on the court called by the Carroll Daggers. We're gonna be back in 30 seconds right here on 93.7 KKRL. Hi, this is Dr. Hercock from McFarland Clinic Family Medicine and Carroll. McFarland says together. Why together? Because together we're stronger and more effective. We're proud to partner with you to recycle plastics. Recyclable plastic will have the number one or two inside the recycle symbol. It's generally a food, beverage, soap, or cleaner container. Make sure they're empty, give them a quick rinse if possible, and put the cap back on. These plastics are not recyclable. They belong in the trash. Visit our website at carrollcountylandfill.com for details of how you can be part of the recycling team because together, everyone achieves more. Led this game, folks, at 49 to 25. So Kemper has outscored the Carroll Tigers since then at 24 to 6. And all of a sudden, after the bank shot from the top of the key, Gifford caught it and he was going to shoot it right away. And you can tell that right now Kemper playing with an awful lot of confidence because he was not really set. It was not a really good looking shot, but he was able to knock that one down off of the bank from the top of the key. And the Knights have cut it to six at 55 to 49. Randy Beeson burning a second time out here in this second half. And the Carroll Tigers now getting some light pressure from Houston. And the gym getting even louder here tonight. 
Was bringing it up his booth, defended by Houseman, kicked pass down to Mackey in the corner. He was shooting it well early. Now off to Lang Lang, over to Booth. Booth drives in and finds Hammer down the lane. Shot up no good, and Alyssa on the foul going to go on the Knights. Crowd had kind of quieted down a little bit for a little while, and Mason having a hard time hearing me, and he's wearing headphones listening to the broadcast because of how loud this crowd is getting. Lang Lang back at the free throw line to shoot a pair. Fourth team foul against the Knights in the half, and Lang Lang misses the first of two. And that's actually Evan Hammer, my apologies there. So Hammer misses his first varsity free throw, second one on the way. It is up, it is no good. Gatto though with a big rebound, his third. Tiger still up six, Booth with it out high on the left side. Lingaling will come up top. They get it down to the baseline corner to Gatto up now to Lingaling. Lingaling right side top of the key, kicks it over to Mackey. Mackey with it near the Carroll bench. Back off now into the hands of Lingling. The Tigers slowing things down a little bit. Taking the air out of this game a little bit. Lingling over to Booth. Booth with it. Picked up by Houseman. Crossover dribble. Pull up draw bar for 16. In and out. No good. Rebound tipped around. And Gifford will clear it for the Kimber Knights. Gifford up the left side. A three would cut this to a one possession game. Houseman with it up top. Defended out there by Mackey. Dribbles over to the right side. Mackey reaching in, gets it off now to Gifford. Pump fake gets the lane, goes in for the reverse layup. It's up and good. He had two at the halftime. He's got 14 here in the second half. And Carroll's lead is it down it to four. And now Gifford comes up with the steal. Gifford, uh, the layup, reverse layup. Didn't need to do that, misses it. Mackey comes up with a rebound on the other end. And now we're going to get a whistle and a foul. Going to go on Dawson Gifford. Gifford could have went up strong on the left side, but thought he saw some traffic coming, so did kind of a dipsy do reverse layup with some spin, and it didn't go. And Mackey, who faked him out hustling down there, was able to grab that rebound. Tigers will inbound over in front of their student section. Right in front of Alyssa Brandt. They'll get it in to Lingling. Or excuse me, to Hammer. Now off it to Booth. Booth drives into the left elbow. Kicks it up top to Cook. Cook back over to Booth. Back over now to Cook. Lingling down here in the corner. They'll get it back up top to Booth. Four and a half left here in the ballgame. 55-51 Carroll. Mackey with it. Timeout going to be called by the Carroll Tigers. It's going to be a 30 We'll take that 30 second timeout with them. 55 51 Carroll back in 30 seconds here on 93 7 KKRL. Midwest Wholesale is your local building products headquarters. We have everything you need for your smaller home improvements to the building of your home or commercial building. We pride ourselves on giving you top notch service, quality products with competitive prices. So whether you're a do-it-yourselfer, a contractor, or you just need a little help on a project, Midwest Wholesale is a one-stop resource for all your building needs. Midwest Wholesale, how you want it, when you want it, where you want it, we deliver. Mitch or Mason, excuse me, doing a great job over here running the video tonight. We appreciate that. Watch the last 427 of this game on YouTube and listen to the audio here. You can check it out. We've got the audio streaming with the video. Go to YouTube, search 1380 KCIM. You can watch and listen to the broadcast here tonight. Tigers were up 24 at one point, down to a four-point lead. Boot drives into the free throw line, leaves it off for Hammer, layups up and good. Booth unofficially now with it, nine assist. Hammer with his second bucket. Good drawn up play that time by Randy Beeson out of the timeout. Casper Bauer out with it high on the right side. Now comes over towards the left side. Finds Vanami, left elbow extended. Vanami with it, penetrates down. Kick pass over to Casper Bauer. Three on the way up. Good! Vanami with the assist. And the shot's falling for Kemper here in the second half. It's a one possession game at 57-54. Booth will bring it up. Eight threes tonight for Kemper. Five for Carroll. Langling now fires up at three left side. That one is short, but he'll get his own rebound. Gets it back to Hammer down to Mackey right corner. 
Mackey with it out to Booth, and that three is up in good for Kayla Booth. Big shot that time by the senior, who's headed to Northwestern College in Orange City next year. Kaspabauer with it. Looks for the backdoor cut, nothing there off that left elbow. Up top to Gifford. Gifford backing it out, defended by Booth. Penetrates in, now backs away. Bounce pass over to the right side to Overmole. Off to Evans on the right elbow. Evans with it, penetrates it down against Hammer. Shot up off the glass, no good. And the rebound taken down by Lingling. He's got five of those unofficially here tonight. Booth will bring it up, defended by Kaspabauer. Works it down the left side, skip pass over to the right side. Mackey penetrates in on the baseline, cut off by Vanami, now backs it out of the wing, finds Cook up top. Over to Booth, three on the way. Can't let that guy have open looks. He will hurt you, and he does it there as he knocks down another three. Tigers up nine, 63, 54, 225 left. Kaspabauer on the right side. Dribbles it back out, close to a five second call. Now drives in the lane over to Vanami left side. Vanami penetrates to the elbow, dump pass to Overmall out to Kaspabauer, three up, no good, and the long rebound taken down by Booth. Booth ahead to Mackey, layup up in good. Nick Mackey with another one, and the Tigers have extended the lead at 2-11 at 65-54. Timeout called by Kemper. We're going to take this break with them. We'll be back in 30 seconds right here on at 93.7 KKRL. This is Iowa, and Avela Bank has called Iowa home since 1870. With 17 locations across the state, we're proud to be part of your community. Right now, you can open an Avela Bank Simply Free checking account for you or your business and get a new debit card immediately. We'll even buy your old bank's unused checks. Stop by or visit us online to see how we're making better banking available for you. Avela Bank, member FDIC. What a run here for Caleb Booth, whether it be distributing the basketball for threes or layups or knocking down some big threes here. Kemper had cut the Tiger lead down to three and then Booth with a run of his own, puts the Tigers up 65 at 254, under two left. Kaspamar will bring it up, comes off a screen by Vanami. They get it to Vanami, who drives down the left side, left-handed layup up, no good. A rebound taken down that time by Hammer. Hammer with his sixth of the ball game, off now to Booth. Booth will walk it up, defended out there by Kaspamar. Crossed half court, hesitation move. Now brings it out top to Cook. Cook with it. Penetrates to the top of the key, picks up the dribble, gets it back over to Booth. A minute and a half left, now off into the hands of Hammer. Kemper may have to think about fouling because Carroll High going to run that North Carolina four corners very well. Booth will drive in, leaves it off for Lingling. Lingling going to be bumped and fouled underneath, and that's going to go on Isaac Evans. That'll be number three on Evans. Actually, that's going to be on Vanami. So that'll be number one on Vanami. Vanami got up into the air. And came down on his back. Booth gets it inbounds to Hammer. Now off to Langling, up top to Mackey. Tigers will maybe have to hit some free throws down the stretch as Potter Kasperbauer reaches in. He'll pick up his third. That'll be team foul number seven. That'll put Nick Mackey at the free throw line. Nick four for four at the line tonight. 60% free throw shooter on the season. Mackey tonight has had a good night. Free throw on the way. Bounces around the rim and he gets that shooter's touch. The lead is at 12 at 66 to 54. Second one on the way. Up no good, but get tracks down his own rebound. I've got him for nine boards here tonight. And now we're going to get a timeout called by the Carroll Tigers. Let's go ahead and keep it here. 66 of 54 in favor of the Carroll Tigers. Do you want to give a quick shout out to, to New Way Ford and Coon Rabbit sponsoring Sports On The Go With Me and giving me a vehicle to drive to all the different sporting events I've been covering over the last year plus. The New Way Ford feature vehicle of the game is a 2018 Ford Expedition. It's an SUV. It's got about 95,000 miles on it. It is a four-wheel drive. 
You can call our good friends down at New Way Ford for more details at 800-861-7268 or check out the Carroll Broadcasting website at 1380kcim.com. We do have a picture with more details available there as well. Sports on the go with me, Jeff Blanket, powered by New Way Ford in Coon Rapids, home of Warranty Forever and your home for free oil changes for life. 66-54 right now in favor of the Carroll Tigers. Minute eight left in this one. Again, the Tigers at one point up 49-25. to Kemper rallied back, cut it to 57-54. But the Knight Tigers have extended it again here on a run of their own. They're on a 9-0 run right now. The lead at 66-54. They'll inbound over in front of their student section right in front of Caitlin Tiggis, their outstanding setter, and Hannah Jorgensen, their outstanding libero from this last volleyball season. They'll get it into uh, Caden Cook. And Cook going to be fouled on the play. He'll head to the free throw line. That'll be team foul number eight against the Knights. And foul going to go on Michael Potterbaum, his fourth. The free throw by Caden Cook up no good. Potterbaum comes down with a rebound. Knights will push it ahead. Potterbaum on the right side. Penetrates in. Bounce pass to the top. We're going to get a whistle and a foul. Going to go on Carroll. That'll be their second foul. And that one's going to go on Ethan Lingling, his first. Knights will inbound down on the baseline. So the Tigers actually have fouls to give here where they could force Kemper to keep inbounding the ball for a while. If they need to do that, they'll lob it into Dawson Gifford. Gifford drives in, takes it strong to the hole, and lays it up and in. Timeout going to be called by Kemper. We'll take this one with them. Tigers up by 10, 66 to 56, 52 and a half seconds left. We'll be back in 30 seconds right here on 93.7 KKRL. Our Davey Tra- Coming to you live from the Gatorade broadcast booth distributed by Pepsi Beverages. Gatorade helping athletes fuel, recover, and perform. Jeff Blankman along with uh, Tiffany back in the studio. We've also got Mason Voigt here watching the and running the video broadcast here tonight. Again, that is being powered by New Way Ford in Coon Rapids. We're up here at uh, Carroll High School. Doubleheader of high school basketball action. First night, really, of the boys' season. All 10 of our boys' teams open up their season tonight. All 10 of our girls' teams, some of them had already played, but all in action tonight. Carroll girls won 73-43 earlier tonight. Here are the Tiger boys leading at 66-56. Kayla Booth will get it in. Ahead now to Lingling, and he'll lay it up and in on the other end. Lingling will make it 12. Booth nearly comes up with the steal. 68-56, and now a three in the left corner by Vanami. We're going to get a timeout called by Kemper. And we're going to go ahead and keep it here. Actually, yep, let's go ahead and keep it here. We'll kind of reset the game for you here just a little bit. Right now, the Tigers with just two team fouls, so they've got some fouls to give if they need to. Kemper has got eight fouls. So the Tigers in the one and one for one more free throw. And then they would go to the two free throws after that. Timeout wise, Carroll down to one. Kemper doesn't have any timeouts left and the possession error will favor the Carroll Tigers. So a lot of things in the favor of the Tigers. They lead it here by three possessions up 68 to 259. Coach Beeson still chatting with his guys trying to draw up exactly once what he wants to see out of them here on this inbound. What a great crowd that we've had on hand here tonight. A few people beginning to start to file out just a little bit. But uh, it's been a great crowd on hand here tonight. They were rocking earlier this game. See Lisa Moore in the house tonight. Good to see people whose kids have already graduated still coming back and cheering on uh, their teams. Caden Cook looking inbound. He gets it into Booth. Booth will run it up the middle of the floor. And now we got a whistle and a foul. 
And that's going to go against Kemper, and that's going to be on at Dawson at Gifford, number three on him. Team foul number nine is Caleb Booth will go to the line. He is at three of four there tonight. He's got 15 points here on the night. So Booth looking to kind of seal the deal here. He hits both of these. It becomes a four possession game with 34.5 seconds left. Probably going to be tough for Kemper to come back. And Caleb's such a good free throw shooter. When he misses one, it kind of surprises you. He knocks down the first one, and it's 69 to 59. I remember Coach Beeson kind of mentioning that last year in a postgame interview that Caleb went like nine of 10 from the free throw line one night, and he was surprised that he even missed one. Hits both of them here. Tigers up 11. Gifford with it, trying to get the three off. Stripped by Mackie Evans, comes up with the rebound. Back to Gifford, he'll drive in. Reverse layup off the rim, no good. Langling comes down with a Tiger rebound. That should do it. Ahead to Booth. They'll throw it down underneath to Cook, and the layup's up in good. Caden Cook lays it up and in. Ten seconds left in this one. Kasperbauer with it. Going to fire up the three with four seconds left. It's no good. The rebound taken down by Hammer, and that isn't going to do it. The Carroll Tigers will pick up the 72-59 to victory here tonight. Tigers hold on and play well in that fourth quarter after uh, giving up some of that lead in the third quarter. Our final score here tonight in the boys game, 72-59. The Tigers improved to 1-0. Denver falls to 0-1. Our Mackey Motors postgame show coming up next right here at 93.7 KKRL. Cell is your local building products headquarters. We have everything you need for your smaller home improvements to the building of your home or commercial building. We pride ourselves on giving you top-notch service, quality products with competitive prices. So whether you're a do-it-yourselfer, a contractor, or you just need a little help on a project, Midwest Wholesale is a one-stop resource for all your building needs. Midwest Wholesale, how you want it, when you want it, where you want it, we deliver. At The Present Company, we will help you transition your home and wardrobe with the changing seasons. Hi, this is Andrea. Whether you're looking to get warm and toasty this winter or it's time for a light and airy lift this spring, shop our collection of boutique style clothing, gorgeous accessories and purses. Add personal style to your home with unique home decor pieces that will warm your rooms from wall to wall. Infuse your home and your wardrobe with style from the present company in Audubon. St. Anthony Regional Hospital, the regional leader in healthcare, dedicated to improving the health of the people they serve. At St. Anthony Regional Cancer Center, you'll find the convenience of cancer and oncology consultation and treatment in one convenient location. At St. Anthony Clinic, you'll find a team of doctors and nurses that care about you and your family's health. St. Anthony Clinic is devoted to comprehensive health care for people of all ages. For every stage of life, always look to the cross. Always St. Anthony. This is Iowa, and Avela Bank has called Iowa home since 1870. With 17 locations across the state, we're proud to be part of your community. Right now, you can open an Avela Bank Simply Free checking account for you or your business and get a new debit card immediately. We'll even buy your old bank's unused checks. Stop by or visit us online to see how we're making better banking available for you. Avela Bank, member FDIC. Can your roof handle extreme hail conditions? Ours can. Check it out. As you can see, our Brinks roof has stood up to the test with zero damage. As for our competitors, well, theirs did not. Is your roof worn out or needs repair? Know that not all roofers and shingles are created equal. If you need honest feedback whether your roof needs to be repaired or replaced, get a second opinion. And call the Roof Pros at Brinks Exteriors, 920 Roof Pro. At Carroll County Solid Waste, we deliver environmental services together. Why together? Because together we're stronger and more effective. We're proud to partner with you to recycle plastics. Recyclable plastic will have the number one or two inside the recycle symbol. It's generally a food, beverage, soap, or cleaner container. Make sure they're empty, give them a quick rinse if possible, and put the cap back on. These plastics are not recyclable. They belong in the trash. Visit our website at carrollcountylandfill.com for details of how you can be part of the recycling team because together, everyone achieves more. 
The door to rewarding career opportunities is closer than you think. All you have to do is open it. DMAX Carroll Campus is your gateway to in-demand rewarding careers. You can even earn a four-year degree on campus thanks to a partnership with UNI and Buena Vista University. It's all waiting for you at the DMAC Carroll Campus. So open the door to a better life at DMAC in Carroll today. DMAC, life's calling. The Tigers did uh, in that uh, that late part of the fourth quarter. All that really coming over about the final two and a half minutes uh, of the game as the Tigers uh, pick up the win here tonight. So congratulations again uh, to the Carroll Tigers and head coach Randy Beeson. I know he's going to be joining me along with one of his guys and uh, Coach Minahan and one of the Kemper players expected to join us here tonight as well. Let's take a quick look here at our unofficial stats here tonight. Uh, we'll start off with the Kemper Knights. And Nate Overmall finished with three points, a rebound, and an assist. Jared Hausman with five points to go with it, two rebounds and an assist. Dennis Vanami, five points, three rebounds, an assist, and a steal. Dawson Gifford, 18 points, six rebounds, two assists, and five steals. Isaac Evans, 10 points to go with it, nine rebounds, and an assist. Michael Kaspabauer finished 10 points, a rebound, and an assist. It was Michael Potterbaum uh, tonight with five points to go with it, two rebounds and a steal. And Evan Adams had two rebounds and a steal. Kemper finishes four of eight from the free throw line. For the Carroll Tigers, uh, Nick Mackey, 24 points, nine rebounds, three assists and a steal. Caleb Booth, 17 points, three rebounds, 12 assists and two steals. Ethan Langeling finishes up six points, six rebounds. Caden Cook, 10 points to go with four rebounds and an assist. Evan Hammer, uh, four points to go with it, seven rebounds. Zach Dirks finishes up with two rebounds and two steals. Tanner Gatto finishes with seven points to go with three rebounds. And Gus Collison tonight, four points to go with it, two rebounds and two steals. The Tigers, 15 of 21 from the free throw line. So you win the game by 13. You shoot 13 more free throws than your opponent. You out make them from the free throw line by 11. I would say the free throw line was a big part of the Carroll Tiger victory here tonight. Tigers winning it again, 72 to 59. Going to step away, take a break. We'll be back with more of our post game show, the Mackey Motors post game show. That's coming up for you next, right here on at 93. Dreams company. People want and deserve more comfort, efficiency, and reliability, both in their homes and places of work. Dries Company will be there to meet these challenges, whether we are designing a new system or servicing your existing equipment. We are a rapidly growing company that strives to meet and exceed all your expectations. No matter if you are looking to buy new appliances or need the help from one of our certified technicians, we are here for you. We pride ourselves in our installation and service. Dries Company, servicing the Carroll area since 1933. Mackey Motors post game show continuing here on 93.7 at KKRL. Nick Mackey with the Carroll Tigers joining us here as the Tigers pick up a 72 59 victory. Nick, a really good start for you guys. That uh, late part of the first quarter kind of took control of the game. What started working offensively for this team? You guys were able to go on an 8 0 run there right at the end of the first quarter. Yeah, I think we just started connecting on shots. They went to a 1 um, 3 1 and we got open looks in the corner because Caleb Booth created shots and they just started falling. You like that corner three. Were you surprised to be as open as you were at times tonight? Uh, yes and no. There was some times where um, I'd have a little extra help on me, but I was more surprised that I got open that much. Able to get some dribble penetration off of that. What were you seeing? How were they trying to collapse on you on that dribble drive tonight? Well, if when Caleb Booth would swing it fast enough, I'd, just, I'd see the paint open. The bigs were playing up a little high tonight and I was just able to baseline drive get some layups 
You guys outscored them 16 to six in the second quarter, only giving up six points. What worked so well defensively after giving up 14 in that first quarter? Um, not so much defensively. I think the biggest thing was we started to limit our turnovers so they weren't getting any fast breaks. And I think it just helped us keep our composure. Some of those turnovers first game jitters or did Kemper do some things differently defensively that you guys didn't look for tonight? I don't know so much first game. I think um, everyone was a little nervous, yeah, but I think it was just some laziness. But hey, that comes with it, comes with the game. Kind of a weird third quarter. I thought you guys came out in the early part of the third, dominated, got up by 24, and then all of a sudden Kemper come roaring back, cut this in that fourth quarter, down to a, a one possession game at 57-54. What turn for them guys, and then what turned it back for you there late? Um, I know Dawson had a couple steal, fast break layups. That really helped them get momentum. Uh, Casper Bauer hits, hit a couple threes, and I, we just lost energy. How'd you guys get that energy back? Caleb Booth's two big threes really helped us. And he had a backdoor pass to Ethan Lingling. He got to the foul line. That helped a lot, too. Kind of a different role for you this year. Um, one of the leaders of this team. Uh, you've been a, a guy that's played a lot for the last four years. But what's it like uh, having to be one of those guys now that might have to be a little more vocal this season? I mean, it's a, it's a great feeling. You know, last season, you'd always, scare, you'd always get scared about play time, whatnot. But this season, me and Caleb Booth pretty much run the show. Well, I tell you what, Nick, congratulations. Great game out of you here tonight, 24. It's got to make you feel pretty good to start the season. Yep. You bet. Nick Mackey again with the uh, Carroll Tigers. We're going to go ahead and get to Dawson Edwards, or excuse me, Dawson Gifford uh, over here, and we'll get Dawson to jump on the headset with us here tonight. And Dawson, appreciate you coming up. What a game for you tonight. Uh, first half, not real good. Um, two points for you at halftime. What started to click for you about midway through that third quarter? Just getting stops on defense. It translates from defense to offense really well once we start getting stops, so that's what helped a lot. Nick just said that uh, they thought they were turning the ball over a little bit early in the game that helped you guys get some looks. What was working well for you guys defensively early in this game? Well, we were playing a little bit of a 1-3-1, one, one, and we were able to pick off passes because they were throwing some lazy passes, but you know, we were able to get out in transition and get some easy buckets. What was the talk like at halftime? You guys are down at that point, 38 to 20. Um, it was a 20 to, you know, a 14-14 game at one point. So what were you guys telling each other there at the halftime? Well, when we get three stops in a row, we call those kills. And we didn't have any in the first half. So we just wanted to get one and then keep on building off of it. So once we got that first one, then we got another one, and everything just started to flow. Any idea how many you finished up with there? I think we ended with three. With three I of them? I believe so. So what did you think about your defense in the second half? It was much better. We were, like, in the first half, we were open up driving lanes, and in the second half, we closed them off, and we were helping more on gaps and stuff like that. Was it just increasing the energy level, or was it starting to figure out maybe what they were trying to do a little more? I think a little bit of both. We just played with a lot more passion in the second half. Once the start to, shot started to fall for you, talk about how that helped lift the team along. You and Michael Kaspar are both knocking down some shots. So talk about what started going well offensively there at late in that second half. Yeah, once we were able to get stops on defense, then more offensive stuff opened up, and we were able to score more and go on a run. Got to ask you, you banked in that three from the top of the key. <laughs> Not making fun of it. The bank's open all the time anymore with the ATM machines. But you caught that when you knew you wanted to go up. I don't even know if you've completely got yourself squared. Were you just starting to feel a rhythm at that point? Yeah, I was just getting in a rhythm, and I knew I wanted to shoot it, so I just let it fly. What happened there down the stretch? They called that timeout. What do you think turned the game back in favor of Carroll there late in the game? Caleb hit some big threes, and they got in a better press break and they were able to just go right through us what do you feel about this team though coming out of this one tonight to be able to come back from down 24 to make this a three-point game what what did you feel like you learned about your club tonight that second half showed a lot the first half was not us the second half was us We've got Dennison Slushwig now coming up on Saturday I'll be out there to broadcast that one what do you guys work on between now and then we just need to get going earlier we need to get the energy up earlier and just get stops earlier well, Dawson, appreciate you joining us here tonight. Great game out of you. We'll see you on Saturday. Thank you. You bet, Dawson Edwards. Let's go ahead and get Sean Minahan, the head coach of the Kemper Knights, on the headphones with us here tonight. We'll get him switched over into the postgame stuff. And, Coach, I know a tough loss for you here tonight, but really got to be proud uh, of the way your guys battled back here tonight. And I thought really made a game of this uh, when it looked like things could go the other direction. I mean, yeah, I thought better yeah <laughs> all right okay um you know first half 
defensively. Uh, we gave up a lot of easy looks. Um, but the number one thing that was upsetting about the first half is I thought we just left a lot of points out there. We counted 10 missed layups. Um, and not just like forced layups, just 10 layups that you got to have type of layup. So, I mean, you leave 20 points out there and you're not going to make every single one every single night. So, you know, you make six of those and all of a sudden now it's a one point ball game at the end. So you do little things like that. Uh, so we just challenge them at halftime, start believing, play with some passion, play with some purpose. Um, our goal is always to get some, we track our kills. With, so yep. three stops in a row. Um, our goal is always eight. We had zero in the first half, we got four in the second half. Um, and within those four kills, we also had 10 straight possessions where we scored. Passion, energy on defense, makes, creates good, easy offense. So that's kind of what we kind of took away from that night, and that's what we can build off of going forward. I know you like to kind of force teams to the left and get them out of what they like to do. Did you feel like that worked? I thought early in the game you guys weren't rotating over to help the dribble drive. Mm -hmm. I thought that got better in the second quarter and then to the rest of the game. Right, and, and they know that. Uh, and they, and they, they position their, self, their, their guys accordingly, and they ran some good good offense to create some easy shots. But part of that is our, our wall or our help has to be in a better position, and our rotations had to be cleaner. Uh, so we switched it. So the same idea, but instead of from, doing it from the man set, we went. Uh, we still would lock it left, but we did it from our zone look. Um, that allowed guys to stay in a, in a, in a more stay at home a little bit easier. Uh, we controlled the ball better at the top. We kept it left more. We really got them uncomfortable. They missed some shots that they're capable of making. They had some, some uncharacteristic turnovers. I mean, those are two of the best point guards in 3A. Right. Not just 2A, but in, in 3A all across the state. Um, and, and we had success against them in that stretch. Now, both when you look at the, the final score, I mean, they finished with 23 and 17 apiece. Um, the biggest thing was we did a much better job on, on Nick in the in the second half than we did the right. first. First half, he was he was on fire. Um, you know, I gave him a little bit of hard time when he was over <laughs> in front of me on the corner. Uh, he did that to us last year, too. Um, and then Caleb just, get, he was clutch. You know, we got it down. We were down 24. Got it down to the, I think this guy said three, four points, something like that. You know, that showed a lot of heart uh, battling back. And then Caleb, the difference was, you know, Caleb's an all-state player for a reason. He, he showed it right Right there, had two or three straight threes, um, and that, that busted the game back open for him. And, you know, we just, we just missed a couple opportunities there at the end. Didn't have a lot of experience coming off the bench coming into tonight, but had to be happy with the way your bench came in and contributed, I think. Yeah, I was really happy. Um, you know, uh, Dawson had a great second. Gifford had a great second half for us. We saw what he was capable of at the end of last year, Yep. and I expected big things for him this entire year. And, and I, I just felt he was put a little bit too much pressure on himself in the first half and just relax, go play basketball, trust your teammates, and he did that, and he scored a lot of easy points, but his, a lot of his easy points came, came because we ran good defense and he'd get out in transition, then he got some confidence going. Um, Michael Kaspar was phenomenal. He really yep. um, did a great job in that run that we made in the second half um, as the point guard, both offensively and then guarding the ball to the top defensively. You know, that, that was a change. That was, that was big for us. Michael Potterbaum. You know, he, he missed some days because of vacation, but he's going to be good this year. Right. You know, uh, DJ Vanami, he's going to be special. He's just going to – he's just a sophomore, but he's young. He's talented. He's just got a little more confidence out there. You know, Evan Adams, another sophomore. We played three sophomores out there tonight. Those guys are going to be really good. Um, juniors did a nice job. Well, I guess Dawson's our only junior that played tonight. And then our seniors, you know, they all played – they did a nice part, played their role, and, and – we got the pieces there. We just got to keep developing. Well, Coach, I learned a lot about your club tonight when they were able to battle back from down 24 to cut that to a three-point game. So looking forward to seeing the growth from you guys in game two coming up on Saturday. Yeah, there's big things to come for this team. I'm excited for them. You bet. Head Coach Sean Minahan again with the uh, Kepper Knights. We're going to head Coach Randy Beeson with the Carroll Tigers joining us here in just a second. Coach running over to chat with somebody here real quick and waking his way back into the post-game area. So we appreciate Coach Beeson joining us here tonight. And Randy, I know it's it's hard to get things all with you. I have multiple microphones, folks, that they have to kind of work here every night. So, uh, Coach, kind of mixed emotions for you tonight. I had to be really happy with your team through about two and a half quarters then maybe not so happy for about a quarter there from that third into the mid part of the fourth quarter and then happy with the way you closed this game out and got out of here with a win. Yeah, it was definitely a game of uh, ups and downs there. Uh, 
you know, we were pretty good defensively there in the first half, holding them to 20 points, and uh, definitely the opposite there in the second half. Uh, but, you know, it's it's good. I told the guys, you know, early on in the year, uh, it's okay to be tested a little bit. It's good to see how these guys respond. You know, we got a couple guys that played quite a few minutes last year, but a lot of other guys that haven't quite got their feet wet at the varsity level. So it's good to see how some of those guys respond. And, you know, it's it, there's a lot of things to work on, a lot of things yep. to improve. And uh, so that's what we'll take out of this one. What stood out for you defensively, especially in that second quarter? Um, you held them to six. Now, I asked Nick that, and he said, we quit turning it over, and so it really wasn't the defense. It was just more not making offensive mistakes. Was that kind of the same thought you had? Well, I thought we did a good job on Gifford in the first half. I think he scored two points. We yep. really wanted to make sure that we slowed him down, uh, and we did that in the first half. Uh, unfortunately, Caleb picked up a couple fouls there. I uh, had three fouls going into halftime, so we had to uh, switch it up a little bit and have someone else guard Dawson there in the second half. But, yeah, at halftime I said, you know, we gave them six to eight points off of turnovers where it's just a layup on the other end. Like, that can't happen. we got to take care of the ball better. And uh, they didn't listen very well because we turned it over a bunch in the second <laughs> half and gave up uh, probably six to eight points again off just uh, easy layups. And unfortunately, you know, usually Caleb's the guy getting back. Right. He didn't want to pick up his fourth foul, so he wasn't contesting or anything. It was just pretty much two points. So uh, turnovers are never good. Turnovers that are leading to layups are, are the worst. So... Uh, you know, but give them credit. They made some shots there, uh, and I think they made seven threes in the second half. And uh, I wouldn't say it was great defense on our part, but once again, they had to make those shots. You know, we were trying to take away the paint and force jumpers, and uh, they took advantage of that and made some threes there in the second half. All of a sudden, it's a 57-54 game. You call a timeout. I thought you ran a great set. If I remember right, you got yourself a pretty easy shot coming out of there. It might have been for Hammer inside. What were you looking for, and what were you hoping to get started again for this offense to get going there after that became a one-possession game? Yeah, it's it's strange because usually when teams zone us, our eyes light up, and we get excited because we got some really good shooters. you know. And uh, tonight, we froze up a little bit. Uh, we weren't very strong with the basketball. Uh, we kind of just looked at Caleb and said, hey, figure it out for us. And uh, luckily he did on that play. We tried to set a little ball screen and get him going downhill. And I think Caleb made a nice pass, uh, Evan rolling to the basket and, and getting a basket there. So, you know, I wouldn't say Caleb had his best game tonight. Uh, he struggled a little bit early on shooting, turned it over a little bit too much. But you got to rely on your best players down the stretch. And he had two big threes, made two free throws, and he scored eight points in the last two or three minutes. And uh, that's what you need. You know, he's played a lot of basketball, and uh, we're going to rely on him a lot. You know, and same to be said with Nick Mackey. I mean, yep. he was really good there in the first half. Uh, I didn't realize he had 18 until the coaches told me, uh, but made a couple threes. And he's really done a good job of not just being a three-point shooter. You right. know, he, he got to the basket, and he finished in traffic. Uh, so he's, he's a really good player, too. Caden Cook, you know, is still coming off of his injury you know right. but it gives us good minutes and competes i think he made a couple threes tonight too yep. so uh it's it's fun you know it's it's fun when it's the first game you're still trying to figure out what these guys can do yep. uh at the end of the day you just want them to compete and play hard and i feel like we did that you know and you're right it gets to be a three or five point game there down the stretch and you're looking saying hey who's going to make a play and it's good to see our guys respond the right way and found a way to win thought you guys also won this at the free throw line tonight. I got you 15 of 20, won them 4 of 8. So you, you, you end up making 11 more free throws than they do. You win the game by 13. That's huge. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, good for our guys to step up to the free throw line and knock it down. You know, we, we don't want to be just three-point shooting team. Uh, you're going to have to attack the basket a little bit. So it was good. I think it was a group effort. Uh, you know, Nick and Caleb, I think, got there a little bit. But some other guys got to the line and, and knocked them down too. So we got to make a little bit more uh, down the stretch, uh, you know, two or three minutes ago when they're fouling. we got to step the line and knock those down. I think we missed a couple of those. But uh, for the most part, we did a nice job attacking the basket and getting to the foul line. Well, Coach, congratulations on the win. We'll have Nick over at Gilbert with you guys on Friday night. Best of luck coming up. That sounds good. Thanks for the coverage. You bet. And head Coach Randy Beeson again with the uh, Carroll Tigers. We'll step away. We'll take a quick 30-second timeout. We'll come back. We'll announce our... Mackie Motors Player of the Game, or excuse me, our Motor In Player of the Game. That is coming up for you next right here on 93.7 KKR. 
Olson's Outdoor Power is your one-stop service and equipment shop for all things outdoor. We sell the best power sports products in the business from Polaris, Can-Am, Sea-Doo, and ski -Doo, trailers to tackle any job from h h Triton, and Wilson, and we continue to lead the way in lawn and garden equipment with great products from Exmark, Dixie Chopper, Husqvarna, Cub Cadet, Steel, and Echo. Add factory trained technicians in two locations, and it's easy to see why Olson's Outdoor Power is the leader in all things outdoor. Olson's Outdoor Power, your one-stop service and equipment shop with locations in Atlantic and Carroll. Time to announce our motor in player of the game tonight. And you heard Coach uh, Beeson talking about it. Two guys really outstanding for the Carroll Tigers tonight. Nick Mackey finishes with it, 24 points. I had him nine rebounds as well. Caleb Booth, 17 points, uh, just three rebounds. But I had him unofficially with the 12 assists in the basketball game. Uh, you got to give Dawson Gifford a lot of credit as well. 18 points tonight to go with six rebounds and uh, five steals. And I also thought that uh, Michael Kaspabauer with uh, 10 points tonight played well for Kemper. But I'm going to go with Caleb Booth because he took the game over late. And, and when this one was hinging, I mean, uh, Kemper had cut it to a three-point game at 57-54. Uh, to 54. And uh, Caleb Booth kind of turned this game back in the favor of the Carroll Tigers. So Caleb Booth is our motor in player of the game. For Tiffany, back in the studio for Mason Voigt, who ran the video broadcast for us tonight, powered by New Way Ford in Coon Rapids. This is Jeff Langman saying thank you for listening to basketball coverage here tonight on 93.7 KKRL. Have a great night, everybody.